So this here is a Nauplius larva. It's the larva of tiny water crustaceans and I found uh, this uh, particular critter in the pond of uh, the local botanical garden. And uh, not only that, a, a couple of uh, beautiful uh, green algae as well. And uh, today I'm going to show you how I've collected them. And then later on, of course, I'm going to show you some more interesting water microorganisms. So hi, Microbe Hunter here and I'm visiting again the Botanical Gardens. Yeah, it's uh, in the middle of April, early spring. It's still a little bit cold today and I'm looking for something to put under the microscope and I don't know if I'm able to find something interesting here, we'll see. It goes uh, without saying that uh, there are many flowers here, of course, uh, but I do not want to pick them and take them home uh, to put them under the microscope. I'd also have to microtome them a little bit. I was also considering maybe to put some flower pollen under the microscope, uh, but uh, there are so many ponds uh, and uh, small little lakes here that I thought, well, maybe, maybe um, I'm going to go the traditional way again and uh, try to take along a water sample to find again some water microorganisms. Now, I've also seen that many of those ponds, well, because it's early in springtime, many of those ponds really don't have a lot of, of interesting material floating on top um, of uh, the water. Um, so I've been looking around a little bit and uh, finally I did find something. Um, but uh, not all of them have water samples that are easy to reach. Uh, so for example, this one over here um, has a lot of green stuff, algae, of course, uh, and so on floating on the surface of the water. This would be actually a quite an interesting specimen. Unfortunately, I'm not able to reach it, so I have to continue and look for a different pond. Yeah, and also this pond over here is not uh, really accessible. I'd have to step over newly planted flowers. I don't want to do that. Look at this pond, a lot of green, green stuff here on, on the water. Algae, uh, probably a lot of diatoms. Uh, I've been here already last year. There were a whole bunch of water fleas and water crustaceans also uh, in the pond here. So you know what, I'm just gonna take another sample today and I'll put it under the microscope. Always take along a little plastic box with uh, some collecting tools. Very important. You never know if you're going to find something or not. And then, of course, you also want, always want to have it very handy. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to then take it home and I'm going to put it under the microscope, of course. And uh, there are a few quite interesting and uh, quite uh, yeah nice uh, little specimens uh, that I found that I would like to share with you. So now let's have a, a look under the microscope and of course, uh, as we already know, a lot of filamentous algae, they produce quite a bit of oxygen and if you look carefully into the cells then you're going to see the green chloroplast and they move, well not only the chloroplast but there are a whole bunch of vesicles in there that are transporting substances. So yes, uh, there is uh, quite a bit, uh, a bit of biological activity uh, going on here um, as well which can be uh, observed uh, quite nicely under the microscope. Those algae, well there are many of them present in a pond but they are not always a good sign strictly speaking because many of them they like to reproduce if there is, are too many nutrients in the water and this is sometimes an indicator um, of over fertilization. So yeah. And of course uh, the Nauplius larvae that which you've seen before um, already. I, I like those little critters a lot because uh, they're kind of transparent and this allows you also to look into the body of the organism. And this one here, another interesting one, this is a ciliate. Uh, normally ciliates are not green. This one is. So what's going on? First I thought well maybe, maybe it's eaten some green algae. But then look the concentration of uh, those green round structures is quite high. And um, I think that these are a so-called endosymbiotic algae. So this means that the algae live inside the ciliate. Yeah, a classic of course. <laughs> That's a rotifer. Yeah, it's a multicellular micro animal. So in that sense uh, quite distinct uh, from the ciliate that I just showed you. Even though the size difference is not that big really. 
but uh, considering the fact uh, that this one is made of uh, many cells and it's uh, still kind of small. My favorite one, uh, Clostarium, that's the name. And uh, if you look at the tip uh, of uh, this uh, green algae, then you're going to see that uh, in the terminal vacuole there are some little dots moving around. These are calcium or barium crystals. Apparently the function of those is not really known, but they move around because of so-called Brownian motion. So this is because of the thermal movement and what the molecules bumping into it this causes those little tiny crystals to move around inside the vacuole yeah but i read again <laughs> yeah it's not quite uh, known what the function of uh, those is yeah some different contrasting techniques here uh, as, as the beauty of nature that's uh, something that i really like uh, especially under the microscope you um, tend to see the environment and the world quite differently you, let's zoom in a little bit also a diatom which is moving around so there are some gliding tired diatoms and uh, they're moving around and yeah it's uh, biodiversity is, is a fascinating thing um, again uh, a lot of oxygen product production happening here um, as a matter of fact uh, algae are those uh, things that uh, produce in especially in the aquatic uh, environment um, yeah one of the most uh, or largest amounts uh, of oxygen and of course they absorb a lot of carbon dioxide and therefore they of course again complete uh, the carbon cycle yeah, another species of the Clostarium that I showed you before. Again, a slightly curved uh, structure. And uh, what you have in the center here, that is the nucleus. This is where the DNA is. And uh, those algae are able to reproduce asexually and also even sexually. <laughs> My son, he's 11 years old, uh, just asked me, why do you always have to put the most disgusting water under the microscope? Why can't you just use tap water? Well, <laughs> it's exactly the most disgusting water and sometimes also the most interesting. So, well, I think uh, that's it uh, for today again. I hope uh, that you liked the video. If you did, do please consider subscribing and uh, also clicking the bell notification so that you're always informed when I upload a new video. Happy microbe hunting as always and uh, see you around next time. Bye bye.